Um, yeah. So um, yeah, us being PHP and Silver Stripe developers, uh, not really comfortable with uh, taking over a Django and Python system. Um, so we had to think of a solution to 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 do all of that. Um, get get that imported. Uh, get in a position to support um, the, the the CMS for our client. Um, so we like to think we're really clever and dirty and like to take shortcuts. Um, so what we started doing was we started like taking a look at the database structures. Um, now I think uh, Silverstripe was originally based on Django CMS. I'll show you how much of an inspiration just in a minute. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but, but, but before I do that, I just want to like, open up the, a couple of pages side by side. So, so this is what we have, like an original page um, that, that was in the Django CMS. Um, as you can see, Django CMS. Um, you know, pretty straightforward, a lot of content, a lot of images. Uh, um, and it has this really cool feature where you can double click uh some some text on the on the front end it opens up an editor and whatnot um and it's got now we we've we've seen some crazy uh block implementation they have their own as well uh which is this um super super complicated uh as you can you know yeah absolute nightmare if you were to pull that over into Elemental or something. It's it's not compatible. You just can't do it. So the only way to actually do it is to clone it exactly as it is. You know, you probably take a couple of years to to rationalize it. Um, and this is basically what you had on the front end as well. So all, all, all of those compile down to what you have, what you get on the front end. Um, so we did do it, we did it. So this is our Silver Stripe front end, um, does the same thing, opens up the block to edit it. Uh, and then if you open up the page in the CMS, uh, I'll have to try not to save anything, this is a live page. They'll, they'll be very angry. Um, <laughs> um, and and this, this is what we ended up doing. So, you know, um, Built all of this in in React. Um, special shout out to Nivanga Fonseca from uh, Silver Stripers in Sri Lanka. Um, he was one of the developers who worked on this. Um, so we 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 copied all of this over basically. So like, uh, add something works essentially the same way. Give or give on a, um, with some caveats like uh, duplicating content and stuff like that. Um, so, how did we do it? Um, well, by cheating, really. Um, so, database structure. Um, so this is the uh, this is a uh, some data from the Django database. Uh, you can see it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's is exactly what you would expect to see if you open up a Silver Stripe database. Uh, a, a, any table in the Silver Stripe database, basically, you know, you got nice fields, some related fields, uh, albeit with some slightly different syntax. Um, this, this, this thing was a blessing in disguise because if imagine if images and everything were referenced IDs, you'd spend so much time trying to get all of those imported properly, but having URLs in fields makes life so much easier. Um, so it probably like saved us weeks worth of uh, effort. Uh, so this is a same database. We've got slightly different thing for images because we do um, some extra stuff like um, having some uh, having some options for providing alt data and everything just in the same field. Uh, so we don't need extra um, extra database field just, just to keep it simple. But it's pretty much the same table, uh, same class well, with with the additional silver stripe um, fields that data object adds. Um, so if we take a look at the list of tables that we have in Django, 
all of this. Keep going all the way down to there. Um, so this is my silver stripe table, exactly the same. I said we cheated, we cheated. We did nothing to migrate that data. The, the tables that we have in Django, we took that, um, we wrote an export script that exports the data from a Postgres database, imports it into civil, um, SQL database, and it just does a one-to-one -one copy, nothing else. Um, one, one thing we did do was to change, uh, change the, uh, the relationship IDs because it was like content underscore ID, whereas Silver Stripe likes it to be content ID. Um, well, I'm going to show you that in a sec. Okay, so uh, this, is a, this is our PHP one. Um, fairly straightforward. Um, pretty pretty standard. You do that with a lot of data objects. Uh, you've got has ones, has many's, uh, a bunch of extensions, and a bunch of other helper functions and uh, uh, get CMS fields and all that stuff. Uh, to compare, this is the Django one. So you've got your um, extensions. You've got your fields, uh, which I absolutely love, by the way, in Django, that you can just say, this is my field, and this is the the the, the input field I want to use without having to like provide them separately. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, th that's the one thing that I really liked about um, about this. But the task is still to convert hundreds of Python files to PHP files. Um, once again, that would probably take us months to do. So how do we do it? Um, well, the answer is in the database. It's exactly the same. So you just have to reverse engineer that, and which is exactly what we did. Um, so we wrote this absolutely filthy function um, which loops through every single table. Um, we whitelisted some because we, like, these are the uh, the tables are. We, we we did the import in portion, so uh, we did like um, events related tables first, and then press related, news related, all of those like piece by piece, so that we weren't overwhelmed. So it's essentially a huge function that loops through everything. It parses the information schema. Um, finds out this uh, information, uh, um, concats everything together in a big running to a running string, um, converts the data types where required, so text goes to text, uh, character varying is a varchar, etc., etc. <laughs> both. I'll take both. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> so basically, once that was written, um, it took like it took about uh, I think about a couple of weeks with a lot of trial and uh, testing and everything. Um, so that one function, and if, if I just run it, it gives me this. Um, so I'm just gonna hold up. I'm gonna take that and put it in PHP so that we can get syntax highlighting. Uh, syntax highlighting. There you go. Uh, let's find the one that we had. Uh, so that is that. I think we may have made a couple of changes since then, but it's essentially the, the same thing. Even has the relationships. Uh, the one thing that I didn't have was has many. They were a bit awkward. I couldn't quite figure out how to how to have to pass them back. Um, but has ones were really easy to do, and has many, uh, many many. Sorry, those were really difficult. Um, so we did that. 
which reduced our workload quite a bit. We also spoke about doing that data import. Um, so then we've got a couple of other modes on that. First one's export. Run that. It writes. Um, it writes shell script or what would go into a shell script. It just does like PSQL export X Y Z into a CSV file. Um, the one thing that took me, I think it took me like half a week to actually figure out how to do properly was to figure out the the best sort of line endings and quote endings and whatever because um, the the standard sort of quote marks and uh, um, uh, normal line endings just caused so much issues. So I had to find, uh, like, go to, like, the deep, dark ends of internet to find some single byte characters that would never be used anywhere in a day-to-day -day, um, editing to, to use them. So I, that's my export script. And then if I do the oops, import again, which does the opposite, MySQL, import from file, into the database. Um, yeah, that's 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 our project. That's what we did. Um, it's it was a crazy experience. Uh, like it, that the 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 actual importing and uh, um, importing the writing the classes. Uh, the migration, that stuff was easy. Uh, now we're having to deal with all of this. This is another can of worms. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, it, it, and it's totally crazy because you probably think like, in a normal world, each of this is a data object. Uh, not really. Um, in Django, you have two things to represent um, what you're editing. You've got your actual data object, which uh, which represents the data in the, uh, in the database, and you've got your editor, which just loads the fields up to deal with that. Um, so we sort of, we're at a problem now where we have to put in versioning, but it's really hard to keep track of, um, like, have that relationship between the editor and the data because you we want to be able to easily version the data but i don't think we can do it easily without version and um, version of the, the 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 editor and they don't have a relationship between them they it's just really arbitrary so Yeah, um, which I think uh, we do do some JSON-related stuff, but I, I do like that idea. That's quite good. Then the only problem would be to, if you ever want to revert, you're basically nuking everything out. Yeah, um, but that is, I, I will try that. It's good advice. Um, so yeah, that was our adventures in porting over a Django website to Silverstripe. Um, I'll just finish by saying that please learn from our um actually learn from example but please make sure um make sure your data is correct because if your data structure is correct you can do crazy stuff like this you'll never have to worry about uh like migrating stuff in the future if if you just really think about um you know keeping the data simple keeping it uh uh keeping your mod, uh, objects, data objects, like do the thing that they're supposed to do and not anything else, um, you can get away by like really doing dirty scripts uh, to Im import PHPs and writing PHP classes. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's, that was me. Thank you. Um, I'm curious, why did you decide to reverse engineer or build the cl uh, classes from the database and not look at the um, class model in the uh, original uh, code as a source, like spin up an instance and, and use that some, uh, somehow? Um, we did. I think that would have just, it, it's basically to save time. It would have taken so much time to go through um, 
Or you mean like look at the the J just do the, the code generation in uh, Python or whatever. Um, like, yeah, and, yeah. And so like use yeah. their metadata, um, their models, and all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, um, because there are literally hundreds of files, hundreds of classes. Um, if we were sh uh, strapped on time, if we if we had more time to do it, we probably would have, uh, and we would have rationalized it a lot more and and made it a lot more Silverstripe type. Um, but uh, I think there was a, there was also the issue with keeping the familiarity as well. So we we wanted to it to be a clone so that clients can actually carry on using it as they were using it before. Um, if we had cracked open the code and 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 uh, tried to make it copy and copy and paste bits of functionality as we saw it, we we would have been tempted to. Um, just start rationalizing stuff and that would have put us down to an entire new path of creating more problems for ourselves as well. No, I'm, I mean, not like manually converting it, but doing the same thing you did in your SQL function mm -hmm. um, in Python, like just yeah. taking their model definitions right. and write code that translates this. Uh, um, that was because I don't know any Python. Oh, oh fair I point. Don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, like Python at that point was like just looking at Klingon or something. I have no idea. Like, um, <laughs> so or any Python that I do know how to read or, or whatnot, it basically came from me trying to decipher some of this. Um, and once again, a big shout out to the Silver Stripers um, who who did work on this and who did an exceptional job um, filling in the bits that were missed out by um, by by the PHP code generation. I have one question, which is not really technical. It's more like, what was the reason that they changed from Django to a PHP CMS? So, because if you look at the outside world, it's more like everything. Sa everyone says, "Oh, Python is great," and so th yeah, I'm curious about this. Um, yeah, I think it's it's uh, it's very it's very political. Um, <laughs> they 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 uh, the 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 clients. Uh, we we do some of their. Um, our primary sort of um, uh, focus is like the art sector, so we like sell, sell tickets for organisations. Uh, sorry, write application to sell tickets. We don't sell tickets ourselves, uh, uh, and we've been doing that part of their site for a long time. Uh, and they had another agency who 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 did their marketing website, which is Python driven. Um, for whatever reason, they wanted to go us uh, to go with us for their marketing site as well. Um, and you know, as mentioned, it we 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 couldn't have supported them um, with with Django and Python uh, again because that's not our experience. So um, converting it to Silverstripe meant that we could continue supporting it and then upgrade it in the future as well. Um, you know, next year or next two years or twenty. 22 whenever Silver Star 5 comes out it'll be easy for us to then take this and just keep upgrading them 